Hi everybody, welcome back to another Once Upon a Point story, video, whatever you want to call this. These are the videos where I tell you stories from my time, dancing, current, past, present, um, all the things. I'm currently in our big, beautiful new space that I will be showing you next week. I cannot wait, it is finally done. Um, but you'll get a full new studio tour next week. Um, but I realized through all of the Once Upon a Point videos I've done, we skipped Dewdrop, which is kind of a big one. Um, I flailed around last year or the year before on here, I'll link it in the card. Maybe I'll do that one next too for technique analyzation. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about Dewdrop. And I kind of forgot about it because it wasn't a big to do. Like Sugar Plum, we talked about, was a big to do. And it appeared on the rehearsal schedule, and we started in October. But Dewdrop was a little bit different story. Um, if anybody is new, welcome. I know I have a bunch of new subscribers. I'm Catherine Morgan. I'm a former soloist with New York City Ballet and Miami City Ballet. And now I do this and freelance and all the things. Um, but Dewdrop was a big one in New York. And oddly enough, I was one of very few dancers who did it backwards. So if you go back to other Once Upon a Points, you know, just to give you a recap, that my first Nutcracker with New York City Ballet was Snow and Spanish Court. I did that all 46 shows. My second year, I did both Marzipan and Sugar Plum. So I actually danced Sugar Plum the year before I danced Dewdrop. Um, and I think Megan Fairchild is another one that did it backwards, but usually you dance Dewdrop before Sugar Plum, because Sugar Plum's the big one. It's the, it's the carrier of the evening. But I jumped right into Sugar Plum. I think it's more my speed, my style. Um, more lyrical. And so, it, I don't know, first when I was 19, I just did Sugar Plum. So the next season rolled around, I was still in the core. Um, I was 20. And we were in the theater at the time rehearsing for our gala. Now the way things used to go at New York City Ballet was we opened the entire year with a fall gala, typically the Tuesday Tuesday or Wednesday of Thanksgiving week. Just how it went. It was one show. We did it Tuesday and then we opened Nutcracker Friday. So we went like gala, couple of days, Thanksgiving, Nutcracker always opens, still does, the day after Thanksgiving. And then you went into six weeks of Nutcracker straight into an eight week season. Now it's a little bit different. They do a four week fall season with their fall gala, typically September, October, then Nutcrackers by itself, then they do only a four week season in winter, January, February, and then they do a spring season in April and May. And each season is only four to six weeks, which is actually a whole lot better for the dancers because doing six weeks of Nutcracker straight into an eight week season is murder particularly for the women, because Nutcracker kills you. Like, it just, you're dead by the end. Um, so it's actually a much healthier season for the dancers. Like, four weeks of performing, rehearsal. Six weeks of performing, rehearsal. It just kind of alternates. All that to say, this particular year, we were in our old format. So the gala was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And I think we were in, we were teching that gala or in dress rehearsal for that gala. And like about a week or so before, and Nutcracker had already started. I had already started getting Sugar Plum back together that year. That was also the year we were down so many people that there were like four of us rotating marzipan. Like it, we had already like gotten Nutcracker together. So no one assumed anybody was doing anything new after that point. Typically, if you were, you already knew you were going to do it. So we were in the theater doing rehearsal. And somebody came up to the dressing room. Um, I don't know. It might have been Erica Pereira because she, she came up and she was like, hey, you're doing Dewdrop and I'm doing Triple Plum. And neither of us were on the actual rehearsal schedule. I said, what are you talking about? She's like, we're literally cast. Casting has gone up. And you're on it for Dewdrop and I'm on it for Sugar Plum. And we had not had a single rehearsal. Now, at the time, casting, and I think it's still a thing. I think it's in most ballet companies. Casting went up like two, three weeks before. So this was going to be a Dewdrop debut early, mid-December, and I had not yet started it. <laughs> so I don't know if we were like last-minute additions or what, 
But I remember thinking, my name is literally on the board to do it, and I have not even started rehearsals. I remember just being like, okay. <laughs> so then we literally like ran down to do dress rehearsal for this gala. And in my head, I'm going, what am I doing? And then one of the ballet mistresses came, came up to me and was like, yeah, hi, you saw your name. Don't panic. It's going to be fine. Meanwhile, I'm 20, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I have two weeks. But then at the same time, it's like, you're Catherine Morgan. Here's the tape. You have three hours. So two weeks was actually, or two or three weeks was actually an eternity. I remember something about Nutcracker casting going up a little bit earlier than everything else. So I had a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I, I, my name went on the board and I hadn't even had a rehearsal. So I don't, again, I don't know if it's maybe because we were down so many people, I don't know. But I went into the rehearsal room with the wonderful Sally Leland, who is no longer with us. And she was my ballet mistress, typically with Nutcracker. Every part has two ballet masters and you'll either get one or the other. So Sugar Plum has two ballet masters, Dewdrop has two ballet masters, so they can divide and conquer. So for example, there are 15 Sugar Plums. The same ballet master can't rehearse everybody. So you'll either be with one or the other. The other ballet master for Dewdrop was Susan Hendel, who's also no longer with us. It's really, really, um, it's really disheartening and sad to know that most of the ballet masters who were there when I was there either are no longer there or have passed. And it's, it's very, very strange for me. But both of them are no longer with us. So you were either going to get Sally or Susie. And Susie Hendel was the very pulled together elegant and Sally was just like, all right, we're doing this. So I had Sally. <laughs> so, um, so I remember her taking me into the studio like the following day and I learned the whole thing in, in the first rehearsal. And then it was just a matter of like pounding it out after that, just like over and over because do drop, you do get to go off stage, which is a lifesaver. Um, but it's, it's like five entrances on and off done. And typically the tempo for City Ballet's Do Drop ain't slow. <laughs> so you're just like pounding it out. But I remember thinking the, the common way that that role is done is often very like sprightly and this and that, and that's not me. So I remember asking Sally, I was like, Sally, can I not be typical? Can I please bring what I do? And she's like, honey, why do you think you're doing this? And I'll never forget her saying that to me. So I got to kind of bring my soft, more feminine style to it than like the canary fairy, you know what I mean? Like just very like, oh, <laughs> that's not me. So I remember rehearsing it and Peter Martin's coming in to watch in his way, very minimal, that's good, you know, fine. And then I debuted in the show where Erica and I did it together. So she was my sugar plum. So we were in the same cast. And I think it was like the special like family matinee or something. I can't even remember what, when we debuted, but I it was a matinee. And I remember Benjamin, and I'll never forget this, and I want to tell you this, dancers, to make a point. Benjamin Milpier, who is Natalie Portman's husband, that's how they met on Black Swan, all the things. Um, Benjamin was in the wings. And I did my thing. I went out there. I did do. I remember saying to, thank God, it was Faisal, one of our music directors who was conducting, because he liked me a lot. And I remember going, Faisal, it's me. Slow it down. <laughs> just, just pull it. Just pull it back. And he was like, I got you. It was a great tempo. He's like slowed it down for me. Just a hair. I would do that a lot with conductors. I'd be like, Hi, it's me. And they'd be like, Gotcha. And that that just meant. Take the, take the edge off because I have big feet and they don't move fast and I just don't look cute moving fast. So like again, if, if you see Catherine Morgan dancing Tarantella on a program somewhere, something has gone terribly wrong. Like just, just get your money back, don't see it, not gonna be good. So they took the tempo edge off for me. And I remember Benjamin standing there and I came off at the end into the wings and he pulled me aside and he went, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing something to that role that I haven't seen in a long time. Thank you for being you. Because one of the problems with dancers who become like staples in certain roles, who look amazing doing certain roles, everybody tries to emulate them. So for example, iconic Dewdrop at New York City Ballet is Ashley Bowder. She's amazing at it. She does it in her way. She's a powerhouse. She can like flip on her head and turn upside down and all the things. But the problem comes in when somebody like me who can't do that, still tries to do it like her, then it looks weird, then it looks wrong. So I remember very vividly 
Benjamin pulling me aside and going, thank you. Thank you for bringing what you have to this role. He said, I haven't seen it done like that in such a long time because so many people are trying to emulate everybody else. Um, and so dancers, don't be afraid to bring yourself to a role. Don't be afraid to do a role how you want to do it. Don't try and be anybody else. Be yourself. Because I remember a, a lot of people came up to me going, we haven't seen it done like that in such a long time. And it wasn't a big thing. I didn't change steps, but I just brought like an, a softness to it instead of trying to be super sharp, which I'm not good at. Um, and I got complimented for it. And again, Sally telling me, well, why do you think you're doing this? So, you know, just because someone does a role a certain way doesn't mean you should. So don't be afraid to bring what you do to a role, what you are, who you are to a role, because it will be applauded. It really will. Um, don't be like everybody else. So I got a couple of shows of that. I did a couple of shows of Sugar Plum that year. Um, and that was my, that's basically my dewdrop story. It's not some big, like, <laughs> I don't know, Juliet or Aurora story. But it was, it's such a fun role. It is one of my favorite parts of Nutcracker. I might even enjoy it more than Sugar Plum because it's kind of like you're on for five minutes and then you're done. And there's not a lot of stress. <laughs> there are flattes, but not many. And then you get to kind of chill while Sugar Plum has to do her whole deal. So I don't know. Everybody who does Drew Drop loves it. Like it's, it's just, it's a magical, magical part. Um, again, I'll link it in a card if you want to see what it is. But yeah, it's super fun. I was so happy to do it. So grateful I got to do it um, and had a blast. I really did. And uh, yeah, we'll forever be grateful for that part. But don't be afraid to bring yourself to a role. It's, it's going to be rewarded. You don't have to be like everybody else. Be you. So that is this video. Again, a little bit shorter, but I hope you enjoyed it. If there are any more stories that I've missed, because some of you guys pointed this out to me, leave them in the box below. I will get to them. Coming soon is the studio tour. But if you missed my technique talk through Giselle where I kind of analyze it for you, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so very much. See you next time.